Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about data structures. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, as a software engineer, have you been able to significantly, significantly improve a piece of code when refactoring by changing the data structure used? Yes. Many, 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 many times. And it's honestly, apart from like the basic Boy Scouting stuff, I think that it's usually the thing that makes the biggest difference in terms of like improvements that I can make to a code base. Because the data is, as I like to say, it's the lowest level. The mo everything starts everything starts and ends with the model and that sounds very philosophical but if you think about it I hope that that's gonna make sense to you I've been I've worked with so many companies and so many software developers who get bogged down in all the other fluff everything from like system designs and network communications and etc 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 and all these things are very very important but I always ask one and only one fundamental question when I start talking about architectural decisions and like how I design a piece of code or a feature or whatever and that is what model do we need to make this happen if we already have an existing feature or like an existing model that where I can see that there's no necessary structure changes to the data then I don't and then I check that box and we can move on to the next thing but I'm always surprised how fast people skip the actual data structure problem because the issue is that if you have a bad model everything else around it is gonna have to cater to that because it's the lowest level it's the actual thing like all these computer programs or all this stuff that you're doing is really just a very fancy layer on top of a database usually I'm not saying always but usually it is a database uh, somewhere there that is storing the information so that you can consume it in whatever format you're looking for right and if that is if it's that's not in a good space or you don't have a structure that makes sense it's actually very difficult for you to do anything I'll give you an example of a misuse of the models within that uh, I actually it was actually yesterday I had uh, so I had a uh, a coworker uh, we were in a meeting and he explained that they had this issue and this was a front end developer and he explained that uh, they had this issue where they had so many of these backend models and they were changing because the uh, backend guys and girls had decided that you know uh, we're gonna move around some stuff in our databases because they had new internal system changes that had to happen which included breaking changes to the models and that was making a lot of sense for them of course uh, the problem was for my coworker and his team that uh, they had done that all famous big in my opinion gigantic mistake that almost every single front-end developer does and that is to look at the network see what the JSON was basically copy paste this and this was in TypeScript and then create a data like a type signature or a type definition an interface in their code that was a perfect mapping between the data from the network like that model or like the shape of that data uh, and uh, what's gonna come into uh, the front-end code and then of course they do the second thing which is the biggest mistake of all which is to start passing in this case it was a react application so they fetch this information from the network and they start passing it around and then they develop their entire code base in that way which means that their entire system now depends on the shape of that data and after I think it's three it was three years of development uh, this thing happens now the data changes the format changes and what happens now is that all of the code has to change with it because it's a fairly significant change 
and the data structure changed in a way that they did not foresee it. And so this is a, it's an example of how, uh, how when you don't think about using the correct data structure for your needs or for whatever you're doing, you might actually cause yourself a lot of problems. So in this scenario, the solution we suggested to them was to basically say, go and say, all right, you have a shape of data today. It's probably not the ideal, but you probably need to create an interface, a mapping layer between the data that is coming from the network and the internal system itself. I do what I call design your interface from the inside of your application. It's the same thing the server does, like when you push data in a form or something like that to a server. The server has an expectation on how that data should look. And this internal system like the server and all the business logic is formatted around that data. And so as long as you can get the data into that shape, you want the idea to decouple what's coming in through the network and just morph it into that shape. And sure, that's not, you know, a lot of uh, some software developers go, oh, yeah, but it's so much more convenient to just pass the data. And I go, absolutely, go on, pass the data. And when this happens, come back to me. And we'll talk about how much time it's going to take them to refactor three years of code with the sort, with this sort of model when the cost to have to have to do this in this approach. Well, changing that is almost nothing because the only model that is changing is the actual thing that is coming on the network. The mapping changes also, but as long as the data is still, if all the data is still there, you can still get it into the correct shape without having to change the entire back, uh, the entire, in this case, front end application to accommodate that data shape. And many times I see this sort of like you, you don't really think about the shape of your data or the data structure that you're using and having like uh, an example of my, one of my favorite ones is when do you use an array and when do you use a dictionary well if you're doing JavaScript like a object or a record or things like that well most developers are using an array for action for basically anything even when they're going to do a direct lookup so you see people usually filtering or like searching through the array to find something that has a certain idea or a certain property when you can do direct lookups if you use some like well a map or a hash map where you just have a key and the value maps to the actual object and those sorts of considerations eh, these are the things that make a really really big difference and incidentally for you guys if you didn't think about that a lot of the computer science CEO notation types of problems of the world uh, a lot of ex of these sorts of algorithms very heavily depend on that you s you create a data shape or like a data you use a data structure that is suitable for the pro for processing and especially in computer science or similar sorts of, uh, if you're doing machine learning, for example, well, then most of what you're doing, if you're a data scientist, is to actually convert different types, formats of data into a data structure that can be processed through these sorts of algorithms. And that's why I tell people that you really have to think about how, like, this is where you're getting, that's getting a little bit theoretical now, but if you want, an efficient solution to your problem you have to understand what an efficient first and foremost you need to understand what an efficient solution looks like so an algorithm that for example is going to do like a direct lookup or something like that or do a lot of direct lookups well if you have an array well your own notation or your execution time especially if it's like a really big data set is going to take forever and instead of doing like a repeated like a looping thing where you, f you r run through that array m multiple times to just search for a key or a property on like an object or something like that in that array if you just did a, a single pass through and put the data in a dictionary where the key that you're going to do the lookup on is or just like the key of that map and the value is the actual data that you're looking for your execution time is going to be enormously improved and in many cases, in some cases, guys, I've done improvements like that for simple th for for uh, for algorithms where the data sets were so large that the time measurement and this is one of the reasons, for example, why Google and these companies are caring about that sort of stuff because if you can spot that by just changing 
the structure of your inf the data the, the data structures that you are using the overall system is actually going to benefit and it can as I said it can be as simple as you know making sure that you don't depend on a model that might change or it can be as simple as understanding that it uh, you know doing a whole uh, wasting memory by holding or not well you're not really wasting wasting memory but uh, to creating a duplicate record of uh, converting a array into a dictionary in order to improve on execution speed might be the way to go. In one scenario I remember we had a, a piece of software that filtered uh, and sorted an enormous amount of uh, the, like an array of several thousands if not millions uh, of uh, records and we found that that was actually very unperformant, and so in a code review, I just saw that well, you know, you're actually sorting and then doing the filtering. I just switched. I just did because there was like a subset of that data we needed, so I switched the filter. So we did the filtering before the sorting. Boom. Execution time dropped by I don't know how many seconds, which was significant for this specific piece of code. So what I want you to take away from this is that uh, I've. I will go as far as to say that apart from boy scouting, which is probably the most common way that I can improve software, uh, data structures and changing the, and making sure that you're using the right shape of your data is the biggest improvement that I make usually or I can make to um, to a system. Unfortunately, it's not that easy to do it in the databases. That's why I always tell people that everything starts and ends with the uh, model you should have a very very strong understanding of how to create a good data structure and good models that will scale over time because trust me when I say this database migrations and things of that nature is probably one of the most difficult things to do in a high availability system or things like that it's always a hassle and it's always a problem so making sure that that is something that you give the due respect is a very good investment and then, as I mentioned, uh, understanding when you know a certain shape of data is more performant for execution times versus another shape, it's not always going to be a matter. I mean, if you have a tiny array of like a 10 elements, you probably don't have to shape things into a dictionary or something like that. But when you have a lot of data, it actually makes a lot of sense. And in some cases, as with my coworker who had like this model, he depended on like you because he had never taken the time to decouple the data that he's consuming or like the model that he uses within the system from the thing he's getting from the network. Well, that's going to cost him tons and tons of time and complexity. And all he had to do was to think about, well, here is the information that I got but I don't want this exact shape. I have a better shape or I can create a better shape that suits my code and like the algorithms or like in this case it was a React application better than just taking the raw data. So it's better for me to just create a model before and then shape the raw data into that model because it's a better structure and then I can do that job once and then if all the other code actually becomes simplified because, what did I say? If your data is shit your system is going to suffer for it. So make sure that your data structure is something that is respected and something that you have thought about because I promise you it's going to make a big difference. Have a great day.